to answer the question literally, yes, absolutely. If you if you uh, recorded what I played and went back to it, you would say, okay, that scale is yeah, yeah. this and blah blah blah. Uh, but I'm not thinking in terms of scales at all. Um, I think I think theory and intellectualizing music is a great thing if you want to communicate music verbally, if you want to talk about it, if you want to explain something to someone. Uh, Unfortunately, 95% of what we do is play, and we communicate orally. Like this is a, this is a sonic thing. This is not a, not so much a verbal thing. So, uh, I think it's way more important, personally, to to have good communication skills and good control of, um, you know, exercises. I still work on in, in the very fundamentals of the instrument being. Uh, the root, the third, the fifth, and the seventh of, of each chord. So no matter what I'm playing, whether I'm playing a U2 song or whether I'm playing, like I played before, the jazz standard, Autumn Leaves, um, th this has a lot of two, five, one language in it, a lot of jazz language, where a lot of improvisation lies. So something I still work on is working on the root, the third, the fifth, and the seventh of each of those chords. various combinations of those. Now that's just the root, the third and the fifth and the seventh and it starts to almost sound like music rather than an exercise. You know what I mean? I, I put the handcuffs on again and I'll say one, three, five, seven or three, one, five, seven on every chord. Three, one, five, seven, three, one, five, seven, three, one, three, one, five, seven, three, one, five, seven, three, one, five, seven, three, one, five, seven, three, one, five, So I'll make those, so, so I have control of each aspect of that. So when I get to C minor 7, to F7, to B flat, I don't have to think, okay, C. Okay, C has the one, the one, the one. I don't have to think about any of that. Um, and it's, it, it's all back in here. And then there are other ways I used to expand that with the root, the third, the five, and the seven by, uh, by using a, a half step below. You get the idea. Um, et cetera, et cetera. And I love that actually also the, the, the language of like playing bebop, for instance, or playing improvised music through 2 5 1 uh, harmony. A lot of it comes from like Bach and, and, and old Baroque music. So harpsichord music and music with counterpoint. Um, so I've found that working on a lot of harpsichord music and piano music from you know 400 years ago is actually helping my modern playing and my phrasing and my timing. You know, a lot of exercises I used to warm up like I was doing earlier on a very kind of classical sounding. Ah. So that kind of, working on all that kind of material, no matter what you're playing, I mean, seriously. Sitting on the dock of a bay. Whatever. You know, whether you play Otis Redding or whether you play Michael Brecker, it doesn't matter. F sharp. F sharp, there it is, baby. <laughs> it's that one. No, it's, it's that one. I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's it's all applicable. You know what I mean. Um, I highly recommend playing like way more than or, or whatever. You know, um, you'll pay the rent more often. <laughs> uh, um, I do all of those things still. I still play a P bass a lot of the time. I, I've never seen you with a P bass. Oh man. I'm going to take down well, all the videos with this. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, exactly. You know, I've done, uh, it's a, I think it's 117 shows this year on a P bass. Um, and I've done another 100, in this year, in, since January 2nd, I've done another 130 radio shows playing guitar. Just me and the artist playing the single, going to every radio station we go to, you know. So um, I do do it a lot. It's just a few things, you know. It's that thing of, oh man, 
it's so hard to, to, to say this without pissing somebody off. Um, there are guys and girls who remain nameless this evening um, who will play a lot of information, right? a lot of notes. And it might not be stylistically right for the music they're playing, but the audience doesn't, they, they look beyond that and they're like, oh wow, this is really impressive, and they go crazy, okay? And it elevates that person's thing, and they, they're famous for that reason. Uh, and it's those few things that I do as a soloist that are technically uh, difficult, and some people don't understand that, that they go, oh, that's, that's the thing he does, you know what I mean? So it's, it's very easy to get, to get put into that category and for that to be the focus um, with, with YouTube and with modern technology and you know people choose to put up the, the little piece of the concert that was the <laughs> you know they choose to put up that little bit instead of the thing that was like you know something really long and chilled out and you know people got high with it yeah man you know that's not generally the stuff that makes it up onto YouTube so it's, it's quite easy for that perception to be to be missed you know what I mean um, but uh, Jojo told me he said yeah man get rid of this bass <laughs> throw it away <laughs> man, just get rid of it man get a Mustang bass <laughs> Come on tour, you're gonna blow people's minds. You know, like, I said, man, that shit will be so slamming. You know, and he's totally right. You know, if I went and did the next world tour with this album and with that band with a Mustang bass and didn't play any of this shit, the audience would change. You know, uh, it would lose me some audience members, I think, because there are a lot of people who are very technique orientated. That's what they want to see. That's, you know, the people who follow Victor Wooten and follow Marcus Miller. Like, okay, 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 okay. Adrian Ferrell and all those like monster, monster chops players. I would lose a few of those. But then Jojo's right, you know, he said, why, why, you know, those people don't think about the music. Me, I'm equal opportunities. I'm just going to do my thing and, and be honest about it, you know what I mean? And it's, it's, it's not the, it's more that, that you, you talk so warmly about the other stuff mm -hmm. and, and the old school stuff. Yep. And, and, I, and I just, uh, I, I think it's both, both things are very cool. It's Me too. That's the thing. I think both things are really cool I, myself. I, I just want to hear why, why you, you pick a high end bass. Uh, because I'm lazy, and yeah. this bass is really easy to play. You know, it's a beautiful instrument. You know, it's this. You know what? It's the same reason I pick these amps. This instrument lets me uh, be myself. The amps do as well. It's a clean thing. It's a true. It, uh, what is it? The true bypass on pedals, right? Where it doesn't affect, right, when you have the pedal switched off, it doesn't affect what you do. It's called true bypass. I only learned that like a couple of weeks ago. Somebody actually explained that to me. And uh, it, see that the amp is, is flat. I keep asking Ufa to build me an amp with just volume on it, you know, on, off, and uh, soft and loud, you know, like, because uh, that's, that's what I use it for. And that's the, that's the great thing about this instrument. It doesn't color my sound. You know, it's almost identical to the bass Matthew Garrison plays, but our sounds pretty much couldn't be more different, you know what I mean? And um, and also, I'm not trying to get like a thousand different sounds out of this bass as well. I'll just switch bass when I need that P bass sound or when I need that jazz bass sound or Rick and back it with a pick or something. I'm not trying to like mess with the EQ and go passive and humbucking or say, I don't even understand all of that stuff. It's, oops, it's flat, you know, and the, the switches stay down. I know when they're down, it works. If, if, <laughs> if, if they're up, it doesn't work. It works, you know what I mean? Not work, work. So that's really the limit of my technical ability. I know where the on and off switch is in here. It's great. It's like right there. And my cell phone clips on the side. Result, you know. <laughs> I don't have to carry a separate tuner with me because the tuner's in the. It's like it's like with the improvising and like with the playing and the composing. I'm just trying to strip things away, like take things away, so that what is left um, is kind of uh, concentrated. Uh, pure, yeah, exactly. Thank you. Um, it, it is uh, is me. Is honest. You know what I mean? It's like you can cloud every. You can like put things around it and encase it, and you know pedals and this and that and the other thing, and it, the, the the actual the essence of it get, kind of gets lost after a while. So the more I can do that, that is simple, the better for me. You know what I mean? 
and um, hopefully you won't find me playing James Brown on this bass. You know? <laughs> but I love James Brown and I love all those guys and uh, especially with the delay pedal still on. <laughs> Silly, but um, yeah.